All right. Um, starting right now, I would like to give a quick overview of logic functions. Uh, this will round out our functions uh, discussion in Excel uh, that we've covered in week two. This is the, kind of the start of week three, but um, this is a little bit of holdout information from last week. So let's go into this a bit. Um, logic functions are another class of calculations that we can do in Excel that's a little different. It's not a pure um, calculation equation function that we do with an Excel. It's something that's going to output a binary answer. The binary answer is either something is true or something is false. And you'll notice right away by entering in true and false, uh, it has done something very strange. It's actually capitalized it all and it's centered it, meaning that this is value is not a text. If I was just a text, you would say true on the left hand side. So it's not treating as a as a text. It's actually a logical concept construct that has meaning. And um and true is just a positive, meaning that a test is valid, has a typical value of one. This is actually just binary interpretation, and a false has a value of zero quantitatively. So if I was to say five times true, it gives us five because true is equal to one in effect. False times five is zero because false has a carries a value of zero. Now what outputs true and false is a comparison or a value statement that's made, a comparison that's made, a logical test as we'll call it, um, that is um, that will either say yes that logical statement is true or no it's false. And what are the logical statements we can make within Excel? Well they're very simply the um, uh, comparisons between two values, for example. Uh, we can say there's two values. Let's call it value A and value B. And we'll give A a value of 10 and B a value of 20. Now the comparisons we can make are equals. We can say something is less than or equal to, or just less than. Or we can say something's greater than or greater than or equal to, or not equal. These are the common logical comparisons that we can make within Excel. So let's say for example we wanted to see whether or not A is equal to B. So we'd have to say equals and then we would say A and then say equals B. So it's a little weird that we have double equals here but it's equals A equals B and you'll get a value of false. Why? Well obviously A does not equal B so that's why it's false. If we were to say then change this logical test to less than or equal to B, it becomes true because A is definitely less than B. And I'm not going to go through all the examples or all the comparisons here, but these are other things we could say. We could also say that A is not equal to um, uh, uh, not equal to each other, and it'll also be true. Um, and so this is just the kind of comparisons we can make in Excel and what it is we want to see. Interestingly, these comparisons don't need to be just numeric. We could also, or should be able to say that A is equal to B, these text values, and that is also false. However, if it's A equals A, it's actually comparing the text within A, and comparing the text within uh, in this cell, and comparing the text within this cell, and it's reporting a condition that yes, they are equal. Now, of course, and we can also say not equals will give us a value of false. Um, Obviously, if we were to say uh, less than or equal to, it says true, or if we just say less than, it's false. It's only judging, and for text comparisons, it can only say whether or not the texts are the same or they're not the same. Obviously, a uh, condition of saying less than or equal to doesn't quite make sense in a textual format. Um, so, with all that said, why would we need to do this? Why are some of the uses of of logic functions. Well, we have a lot of key uses, but uh, most simply, uh, you can use it as a test indicator, you can use it as a function indicator, and so forth. So let's, for example, I'm going to delete these, and um, I'm going to go into and highlight, well, we've kind of talked about logical tests, and highlight some of the functions we can do. And I'll start with the if command, because I think that's the one that's most powerful within Excel, and the one that you might get the most value out of. So where could we use this? Let's say we have a height indicator, that we have something, 500 um, uh, inches. Okay. 
And let's say we have, and this height indicator is on a tank. If a liquid level is in a tank, let's say this is a liquid level, and let's just say it's 50 inches, that seems more reasonable. Um, and we have a, the height on the tank, let's say it's, it's a tank that has a wall height of 6 feet or 60 inches. Um, so we wouldn't want the tank to go above, say, 58 inches, otherwise it would overflow. So we could actually have an alarm set up in Excel that would evaluate well, um, this value here, the height, and if we say if that value is equal to, greater than or equal to, um, oh, I don't know, let's say that the height of 55 inches, then we can have it output a text value of shut off the valve. And that's what happens if the value is uh, valid, true. If the value is false, we can add in uh, another, if the false, if it's less than that, and we don't have to worry, all is okay with the world. And we would just have now an alarm, and we can, a system that we can set up that's going to give us a value of what happens if this height change evaluates. And it's just going to output and textually say what we can do, what we can change, and let us know that something is problematic. Well, that's uh, one uh, uh, indication of, of uh, how we can use this value and how we can use this uh, approach. Um, there are a lot of other things where you can do actual conditional uh, calculations, for example, uh, in terms of, of uh, the in terms of calculation. So let's say, for example, we have a plot of data and we're going to have x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Or let's go from negative 1, neg uh, uh, or negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we can go here and say ln of this function and go all the way down. And you'll notice that for values less than uh, from 0 or negative, uh, the log value of that is meaningless. It's an error. Um, and perhaps we don't want it to output an error. Maybe we want anything less than 1 to be reported as a 0 just for the sake of, of uh, output. So if that's what we want, um, we can actually go back in and change this value to test and see what the x value is and say if it's less than or equal to zero I want to output the value of zero otherwise do the function as we've asked and we can plug that in and you'll see we'll get the exact same value that we have here it's just now all the zero all the values that are zero or less are called zero and everything else is one this is just a simple clean way of representing data that may have a calculation error that's illogical, but in terms of plotting, um, it allows us to have a flat line in an area where it's just meaningless to have the value there, right? So this is another way for us to use the if function and logic test. And there's an ad nauseum amount of ways we can use this, and I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but just to let you know that these are things that we can do. Um, I encourage you to play with these because we will go through some examples of, of logic functions uh, in class um, on, uh, to kind of just practice this because I think it's a, a good understanding. But um, note that there are cases where you may want to compare multiple comparisons or multiple uh, uh, changes, and so let's say we had a value of A or B, and that's were 20 and 10. And let's say we wanted to have a comparison of uh, and. If we wanted two logical tests to be true, or multiple logical tests to be true, let's say we first wanted to know if A is greater than or equal to 20, and if B is greater than, oh, if B is greater than or equal to uh, 10, uh, 20, I'm sorry, if B, how oh, is it, comma, if B is greater than or equal to 20. And so now it's going to report back a value that is true if both cases are true. 
if any one case is false, it reports back false. And that's uh, uh, this logic train. And these, and these can have infinite number effectively or a large number of ands that you can summon. But any one thing that's false will make the whole logic false. Um, alternatively, we can say or, and the reverse happens. As long as one thing is true, that statement is true. If all of them are false, then the statement is false. And so that's uh, where that uh, comes into play. And so it allows us to make multiple comparisons, uh, multiple logical tests. They don't all have to be the same value. They can be a variety of different combinations. But if you want to combine multiple logical tests, then that is um, how we're going to uh, see that. Now note what happens if I just say or F2. You get the value of true. Or if I say or f3, you get the logic value of true. What does that mean? Well, it's actually looking to see if there is a value in that cell, if uh, and that value is not zero. As long as the value is not true, zero, you get a value of true. If it's zero or null, you get a value of zero of uh, a value question. But if it's a zero, it gives a false, and if it's a number you get a true and so that's just uh how it's handling logic there as well and so that's sort of the a nutshell of logical tests and and some of their applications but i think logical tests become a little bit more powerful when you use some of these other functions as well and this is uh and i give you an example of the sum if average if or count if uh examples so let's say for example and I, and, I, and this is just one uh condition i can kind of always think of on top of my head um is grade book examples let's say i have names of students and i can say I don't know, Sid, Nancy, uh, Marvin, Mar a Martian. Let's say we have um, uh, Steve, Luke, uh, Mikey, Bingo. I don't know, any other names you can think of for people in class. Uh, uh, Hilbert and um, uh, Rick, Morty, whoever you want to be in this class. So. We have a class of students, but let's say there's two sections these students belong to sections. And Sid would obviously be in section 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2. So two sections, I'm just randomly assigning them. And Marvin, I am going to click that name because that's going to bother me if I'm not. Okay, and Marvin, and let's say they have a grade average. Grade on exam 1. And Sid, I think... We'll get a 42. Nancy will obviously be a, a, a 78. Marvin, I don't know, 12. The Martian, 88. Steve, uh, 70, 67. Luke, 99. Mikey, 98. Bingo, 100. Hilbert, 12. Rick, uh, 55. And Morty, uh, 1. And I think Rick actually will probably have to get, um, he cheated, so he'll get a 0. And Morty, yeah, 45. Okay, so we have that. But now, let's say I wanted to get average for the sections. I can average for section one and an average uh, av uh, course averages exams. And let's say we want to do it by sections. Sections one, section two. Well, we can get the average by doing a average if average if option and you'll see here you have options of the range criteria and then uh, the average range now the range is the range that the test is going to be comparing to so in this case I'm going to be looking into the section because that's what we're going to be our, our our test is for and then we can comma and then our criteria in this case is we're going to say uh, is uh, equal to the section. We have that. Um, actually, typically we don't even need to do that. If it's just value equaling to that, we can just say that uh, our criteria is it matches that value. And then our average range is the values. It has to be in a column format that's of the same dimensions as our comparison range um, that we're comparing to. And usually it's a side by side or some other dimensions, but we want to make sure that the dimensions are the same as the section that we're comparing to, because then it'll just pull um, in, in row format the matched row. Um, I'll match that. 
equal to and bring that down and you get the averages between the two sections and it's just looking at those values um, and I think if I just put equals to yeah it won't it doesn't like that too much but we can say equals to one as our criteria and that's another way we can actually have it uh, do that value if we set equals three it's going to divide by zero error because we have no section three so that's just the output that we would get uh, from an average function um, but we can say average is equal to two and so forth and however you want um, and that is um, one okay and that is the same thing you can get for summing so you can sum up the values if you wanted to or you can get average or count if this is just a very powerful way of getting information um, from a large list of data uh, very simply by calling features within uh, um, uh, matched columns and, and bringing that together. It's a very useful function in Excel and, and something that um, may be more valuable as you're starting to do data analysis and collection so forth and so forth. And then finally I'm going to talk very briefly about the option of using the the uh, Conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, if you go to home, you'll have this option over here that says uh, conditional formatting. And this is kind of a neat toy within Excel that is very powerful if you have a very, very large list of data and you want to see something uh, pretty uh, rapidly. So, and it sometimes is a prettier way of presenting information. So you can go to conditional formatting and you can actually specify rules to highlight certain uh, systems or you could even give gradient fills that'll show in this case magnitudes to show grades on on the plot as as you're seeing there and you can kind of get a sense of uh, really rapid feedback as to what you want to see or you can specify rules such as let's say uh, values less than um, I don't know uh, 20 here we can say that we want those cells to be highlighted red with dark red text and this becomes a very clear way of, of people who are scoring very poorly on this exam or or let's say you had a data set of, of, of uh, accounts and you wanted to highlight the ones that were um, below zero or, or running in the red and you can use this as a quick and easy way of seeing values that are problematic um, and there's a bunch of different conditional formattings and you can even get more creative with them by specifying some very uh, select ways and you can specify a color scale and so forth. There's a lot of power in here uh, to represent data and plot data in pretty elegant and clean ways. So I encourage you to look at that. Um, I will not, and this is just a quick grade point, I will not ask any exam questions or any quiz questions on conditional formatting. So uh, that is a, um, so you don't have to know this for this class. I'm just sharing this with, uh, with you for the sake of uh, completeness. But I will, since I'm not going to test on it, I'm just going to say orange. But uh, uh, just know that it's there. But all three of these other things are definitely things that you will need for this class and actually for Excel in general. So anyways, we'll stop there and we'll continue on to matrices in, uh, in the next few videos. So thanks.